But when I was with the swim team, I shift my focus. And I would always ask them for stories that they had. I would ask Eliza for stories. I didn't need any stories about Sheza since I like knew her since we were little. Um, but I asked Azra and Nida for stories as well. Let me tell you about this dude, actually. Okay, so if you watch me, you know, like, when I was a teenager, I spent most of my time just um, listening to girls tell me stories. Like, that oddly specific phrase, that's what I spent the majority of my time doing. Because... I like just listening to stories and they open up. Um, I listen to anyone actually who's willing to open up about their stories and emotions. Guys didn't open up about their emotions. Girls did easily. Um, in fact, they were like happy to do so. I didn't, it was effortless. So over the years, I got really good at just like uh, listening. And ultimately that's what I wanted. I'm addicted to story, I still am. And movies just don't cut it for me anymore. TV just doesn't cut it for me anymore. I need something a bit stronger. I need a bit more potent of this drug. Um, anime still does it for me, but I've, uh, I've been getting jaded to anime kind of ever since, ever since college actually, where, where we had to start analyzing film. But I guess that's the downside of going to art college. That I, if you truly enjoy art, I would recommend never going to art college if you truly enjoy art. But, um, yeah, I did the same sort of thing out of Luma. I would just list, I would just try to, uh, extract as many stories, milk as many stories as I can out of these people. I tried to do that to a bunch of girls. Honestly, Olumo, I wasn't all that successful with. I was much more successful back at home where I can establish a bit of a rapport, right? But I had a reputation because they knew, like people over there knew, oh wait, that's the guy that got blacklisted from Mosaic and that sort of thing, you know? So I, I had a bit of a reputation. I still, I still got stories of a bunch of girls and one of these girls, her name was Faiza. And she, wait, I have, I, I, their picture was up there. They were both up there. This was their, the, uh, Jorania cousin, that's Anum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is Eunice. This is Faiza. This is Faiza. She's extremely, extremely short. Damn, I guess there's no pictures of her height. You look at, like, everybody else in this picture. Remember, I showed the video earlier of how short Mosin was. Dude, look at that. But yeah, that's them. And that's Asmir, I believe. Wait, no, 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 that was. And I don't know. It's so hard to tell. People kind of blend together in my memory after a certain point. Faiza was one of these girls that I was like, yeah, hey, I can get a story out of her maybe. So I should give it a shot, right? First of all, let me get this straight. She looked like a middle schooler in camp, okay? Like I said earlier, I was not interested in hooking up with these girls. I'm not into Desi girls, dude. I don't like them. It's very rare that I'll find a Desi girl attractive. Uh, there's a couple from my childhood, but that's it. And that's because it's childhood and, and it's rose colored, rose tinted glasses, all right? So I was not interested in, in hooking up with these girls. See, at this point, like Ming Dynasty pussy got these dudes acting unwise, all right? I'm smarter than that. I've, I've got a bit more self-control self than these other guys. I can't blame them, right? I was the same. In fact, I was actually, it's not that I was the same earlier. I was the same even during camp. I was just addicted to something else. They were on that dopamine wave. I was on my oxytocin wave, all right? All I wanted was to hear some stories. Actually, I was on my oxytocin and adrenaline wave and like norepinephrine and all that. I don't wanna get into, look, I don't, I'm not trying to sound like a fucking nerd, okay? So, um. I start talking to Faiza, like randomly, like in passing, right? And um, I notice she is one of the ones who I have a bit of like a, a, a not like chemistry with, right? But it's easy to uh, talk to her. Like I can flame her. Uh, she'll flame me back with no hesitation, right? There's very little hesitation in our speaking. Like I don't need to think about what I'm saying. And it's, she doesn't need to think about what she's saying with me. So it's like, it's, uh, we're, 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 we're able to communicate at a very high bit rate with very high accuracy, relatively speaking, instantly. There was no uh, uh, effort beforehand that we needed to put in. And now, during camp at least, Eunice was dating Faiza. It's so crazy, dude. She looks like some like Disney channel, like Mickey Mouse or something like, I don't know how you, whatever, man, to each their own. But yeah, Eunice was dating Faiza. And this is about Eunice, by the way, it's not about Faiza. So after talking to her and passing like two or three times, it was like a, over the course of a day, right? And I'm like, hey, fuck basketball. Go grab a drink. Let's go sit on the side and talk. And by drink, I mean like water. We're at a Luma, dude. So we leave the basketball court. Or I think she was already off, but I leave the basketball court. And Eunice is still there. He's on the basketball court. And he's watching like a fucking hawk, dude. And again, I have no ill intention, okay? Well, uh, you, it's, it's in the eye of the beholder. Maybe... Uh, uh, using people for as many stories as I can possibly get to satisfy my own addiction, maybe that's ill intention. I don't know. But I don't have the ill intention that people might think I have in this situation. So we sit down and I go like, I, 
life story, run it. And she starts talking. And Eunice is far away. He's like on way on the other side of the of the building in the basketball court, right? He's playing. And I pay attention to what she's saying for like two seconds. Bro, fucking not even a sentence into what Faiza is saying, not even a sentence into her telling her story. I look at my right and I see Eunice standing next to us. We're sitting down. He's like standing above us, trying to look all intimidating. This dude fucking teleported. He's like, hey, hey, hold up. And then he pulls her to the side. And they talk for like, I, I, I don't remember, like 30 seconds, a minute 30, something like that. And then she comes back, uh, comes to me again. And uh, Eunice is still standing there like far further away. And I stand up because I know what just happened. All right. This isn't the first time this happened. Um, this happened all the time throughout uh, middle school and high school. But I just, I don't, I never expected somebody as cool as Eunice to be such a pussy to do it. Because she comes up to me and she goes like, uh, we can't really talk about this anymore. And I go like, I know, don't even worry about it. Because it's like, I'd seen this before. I think this has happened plenty of times. But it's like, dude, Eunice, come on. You're, you're, this dude, this dude was scared of me taking his girl. Not even taking, this, this dude was scared of me threatening their relationship. Like, I'm a, a guy who sits inside all day. I'm inside. I have blackout curtains right now because I don't want to see the sunlight. I'm on Discord all day playing fucking Roblox and Brawlhalla. Um, I play no sports. I have shit hygiene. I have yellow teeth. I live in a different city than them. At the time I weighed 84 pounds. I probably weighed less than this like four foot tall girl. And I had never, and still to this day, have never had a girlfriend in my life. Eunice was scared that that guy, the guy who has all of these like ridiculously stupid characteristics was going to be a threat to their relationship. Well, that's flattering. Makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside when I think about it. You think that I'm that competent? You must think very highly of me. I mean, like, okay, he didn't have the right idea, but his instinct wasn't wrong. Like, I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. If I fall for you, there's going to be trouble. Because I'm in a position now where, in my life, where I decide who I end up with. Not like the girl choosing me as one of her options, right? I'm the one who's choosing now. So it wasn't like I was incompetent, like how I'm making it out to be, right? I'm better about my hygiene. I weigh quite a bit more now. Going to the gym. I don't play video games like that anymore. I like, I got shit going on, right? And uh, most of all, I had experience talking to girls. Like hella experience. Like I knew what I was doing, okay? There was no way I was screwing that up. Eunice will embarrass himself a thousand times in front of a girl before I embarrass myself once because of how much experience I have. Way more than him, 100%. And he had the wrong idea, but his instinct to keep his girl away from me, that was a smart move on his part. Not in the context of Aluma. I'm not such a horny bastard that I'll like try to like fuck a girl who I met like literally that day. But uh, yeah, if I decided to, mm, it probably would have happened. Not with Faiza. I mean, they were dating. I wouldn't, first of all, I would never do that. Second of all, on, on, on some real shit, trying to hook up with a girl who is in a relationship is actually a serious challenge. You have to be, you have to be on some shit to, to even attempt that sort of thing. Look, I wasn't that experienced with talking to girls in, in that sort of context. I was more experienced with just listening to girls, but ultimately that's what they want. They just want to be listened to.